Well, the, the sun, like the Earth, has weather. It's a very hot ball of gas, and it goes through cycles. And every 11 years, it quiets down and then gets more active. And right now, it's very active. And normally, you'll see a flare of gas coming off uh, you know, once or twice a week. But it's usually very small. What's happened this time is we have a large sunspot which blasted out a bunch of stuff towards the Earth in a way that hasn't been seen for 20 years. So it's sort of like if you can imagine a typhoon or a hurricane that's a Category 5 or a tornado that's a F5, this is a solar storm, it's a G5. And Aurora Australis, uh, you know, uh, is in the southern hemisphere, am I right? And so we yes. experience Aurora Borealis. So talk about the countries that have seen it and if there are any left to, to still see it. Well, I'm in Washington, D.C., and I keep talking about this on TV, and it's cloudy outside. So where you are on Earth, are on Earth is important, but it's your weather that also has something to do with it. Normally, you only see the Aurora Borealis, which is in the northern hemisphere, up in northern North America, Siberia, northern Europe, uh, and in the southern part of the Earth, down near Patagonia and southern Africa. But what's unusual this time, and the color, the pink, that's because of the sheer power and energy uh, of this gas of, and, uh, and, and particles that are hitting the Earth's atmosphere. As such, that's why you're seeing it further south and further north if you're in the southern part of the world, but not to the equator, almost. And just looking at the footage as you talk there, there's an amazing range of colors. Can you just talk a little bit about the variation of color and what's really going on there? Well, A, I'm jealous because I'm not going to see it tonight. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the images, and there's been thousands of them on social media, the colors, like the bright ones, the, uh, the pinkish ones as oxygen atoms, and the different colors have to do with whether the protons and electrons that the sun is throwing at the Earth hits different types of gases at different places in the atmosphere. And the more powerful it is, the more colors you get. And what about the electron distributions? How does it affect... Uh, satellites in Earth orbit. So when the solar flares exist, do they cause any disruptions to technology? They can. And while you and I can, well, I won't hear tonight, but you can go out and just enjoy the wonders of the universe by looking up at it, we become dependent on satellites. And when you have a powerful storm like this, it can affect uh, the electrical systems and satellites, which we depend on for, you know, GPS, or our cell phones, you and I are probably talking over a satellite link right now, that can be affected. So far, there's only been some minimal disturbance, and uh, we've been lucky so far. But, you know, power outages can happen if the, the storm hits the Earth in just the right way and gets down to the wires that connect electrical generators with the people that use the electricity.